my name is Ramona Bear from Berry Sally Clap, and today we're going to be doing hmm, dimensional analysis. All right, so what is dimensional analysis? Well, I'll give you a little idea. Let's say you have a rectangular prism. How many dimensions does it have? Three. And now throw that all out the window because this is trash. That's not actually what dimensional analysis means, you idiot. So, what does it actually mean? Well, let's get back to that rectangular prism. What is this? That's the length. This is the height, and that is the width. So, the area, or the volume of this rather, is length, height, width. But, now, you see these? Throw them out the window. You see this? Throw them out the window. Why? Because, think about it this way. How do you measure length, and height, and width, for that matter? Because they're all really the same thing. How do you measure them? Well, if you're not a stupid weirdo that uses the imperial system, like who uses that seriously? Then, hopefully, you measure it using meters. So, you would also measure height and width this way, because they're the same concept. So, what you have here is how do you find the units of volume? Well, that's easy. You have meters times meters times meters. So, volume unit must be cubic meters. So, that's the whole sort of idea of dimensional analysis. So, what is dimensional analysis exactly? Well, usually when working in formulas, you're working with the variables. That is more, buddy. Now, you're going to be working with the units inside those variables. Not only fundamental, like the meter, but also derived, like the cubic meter. So, how are we going to do this? Well, let's say, oh, no, where's my red marker? I need to draw an apple. So here is my um, apple. It's a very abnormal apple. I don't think any normal apple you would see would have a black stem and a black leaf. But uh, it's the best we get, have. I don't know. Don't ask me about rotten apples. We get only the freshest produce. So, let's say this apple is falling towards the ground. That, uh, none of you would want to eat it, so that's why we threw it towards the ground. So, if it's falling towards the ground, what is the time that it takes to hit the ground? Well, let's consider all the possible variables. Like, for example, height. But we don't know how height will relate to it. We'll put an alpha, and it may not be exactly equal to, just proportional, because we're going to be adding a sort of constant to the mix. Then, let's say, uh, mass may also affect it. So we're going to put mass to the beta, and then you also, so these, may be the main factors, but also the gravitational acceleration on the planet you're on will also matter. So we're going to call that gamma. Is that an L? Yeah, I don't think that's gamma. That's better. So, anyway, what is alpha? What is beta? And what is sideways alpha? Well, we're going to find them all out. So first of all, remember, we're not going to be using variables. 
throw them out the window, buddy. So, instead, we have seconds on this side. And then height to the alpha, we're measuring height in meters. So we have meters to the alpha. And then mass to the beta, so times kilos to the beta. And then times g, g has its own unit, meters over second squared, but that can be split into length over time squared. So, since we're, oh look, the fireworks! It's July 4th, happy July 4th, everyone. So, because we raise g to the gamma, then this will also be gamma. Now we just have to replace the units. So meters and seconds. So we're trying to make both sides of this equation equal to each other. How do we do that? Well, first of all, there's no kilograms on the other side. So, you gotta go, buddy. Be so, that means the beta should be equal to zero. So kilograms to the beta should be equal to one. So it effectively just disappears. So now, we just have this. So, this is alpha plus sideways alpha. So that means that we have m alpha and then plus sideways alpha, or time take that, all over mm, seconds to the two times sideways alpha. So now, since we don't have meters, this has got to go, buddy. So a plus, not a, alpha plus sideways alpha also has to be equal to zero, even though they're not even necessarily zero themselves. So, that means that seconds must be proportional to seconds to the negative two pi, uh, the sideways alpha. I almost said pi for a second. So, <laughs> this happens because essentially, since this is gonna be equal to one, that means we have one over s to the two uh, sideways alpha, which would be sideways negative two alpha, obviously. So now that means that negative two alpha, uh, sideways alpha, must be equal to one. So sideways alpha must be equal to negative one over two. And thus, as a result, alpha must be equal to one over two. And then, you're multiplying it by, what is this? H alpha, but alpha is one over two. So that means we have the square root of eight. And then you have negative one over two. So you have one over the square root of t. So that means you have t equals c times the square root of eight over the square root of g. So t is c times square root of eight over g. Man, Simple. And if you do reverse dimensional analysis, it all works out. Constant has no unit, height, uh, it's just length, over g, which is length over time squared. So that simplifies to s equals root t squared, s is t, time has seconds, boom, works out. Oops, I accidentally amputated this t. I'm sorry. So anyway, that is dimensional analysis. Thank you everybody for watching.